Hi everybody, Jim Setzer, Images by Design Studios, and welcome back to another one of our photographers workshops. Today we're gonna talk all about gels. Okay, well, I uh, welcome back a whole lot of uh, familiar faces and some fresh faces as well. Uh, if you're familiar with the format, we always start with uh, Jim not being able to work his computer. Um, welcomes and introductions. And then we go through this list of topics. I don't call it an agenda because that sounds too formal. This is really just a discussion about the topic. I am by no means a be all end all expert on any of these topics, but we've got really bright, really experienced photographers. I'm hoping for a great interactive conversation. So if I'm missing something that you know and, and is important to you, please chime in. If you have a question, certainly chime in. I may, may not be the person with the answer, but I bet somebody in this room does. So I throw down the things that are that I know about a particular subject or that I work with. And um, like I said, by no means is it, a, is it a complete list. So hopefully we'll add to that uh, in our conversation along the way. So um, with welcomes and introductions, let's start with our model tonight. You want to introduce yourself? Maddie? I'm Madeline. Um, I've been modeling freelance for two-ish years now. Okay. And she's been to the studio just one time, but uh, the pictures were so gorgeous. I'm still getting great comments and, and uh, compliments on her and her wonderful posing. And uh, especially her hand. Her hand poses are just so on point. We love it. So I was excited to invite her back for this particular subject. So thank you for joining us. How about you, Judith? I'm Judith Soul. You're asking a question? I'm, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure. What, I was hoping somebody else would go first, so I wouldn't have to be me. But I'm Judith Soul. Maddie went first. You're second. Oh, OK. Well, I'm Judith Soul, fresh look photography. Been doing photography for eight years, nine years, 10 years, 2008. <coughs> All right. So for everybody, uh, let me get uh, the question of the day. Sorry. Do you use gels, and for what genre? That is helpful. So, hi guys, I'm Judith Soul, Fresh Look <laughs> Photography. I you have used gels in the past, don't currently use them because most of my work is wedding and portraiture, and with our work being so on the fly, I don't incorporate as much as I should because I'm lazy. All right. If we're being honest. Great. Let's welcome a fresh <laughs> face. I'm Donna Angelico. I'm actually one of Judith's students. Welcome, Donna. Um, I'm turning a passion hobby of photography, hopefully into a profession. Great. Um, and I'm finding every meetup meeting I can go to. Mm -hmm. Like I met this gentleman at the cemetery. <laughs> gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> Who were you pointing at? <laughs> You're welcome. We love you too, Joe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I love everything that I'm learning and the people I'm meeting. Great. Yeah, perfect. I'm Steve. I shoot pictures. <laughs> there you go. Okay, great. Thanks. Short and sweet. Pete. <laughs> okay. So I'm at uh, Portrait Landscape Sports. I have used gels uh, for portrait photography. I found them to be quite challenging. Yeah, uh, they can be. To be effective with them. All right, great. How about you, Pete? I'm Pete. I shoot pretty much anything, everything. I mean, I thought you said jello. Oh, well. <laughs> no, I, I plan on using gels after I learn all about them from Jim. <laughs> right. better. Uh, I'm William. I'm a hobbyist, serious hobbyist, I guess would be one way of putting it. And I have just started uh, trying to understand gels and color correction. So uh, still a new topic for me. Great. Welcome. Gene. Gene Tick. Um, I've been shooting forever, and I have used Wisdom. gels and uh, what's that? Wisdom. Wisdom, that's right. Yeah. Wisdom. Um, that's another topic. But I have used <laughs> gels in modeling situations in studio. Um, not enough. I'd like to do much more and uh, have a lighting, stage lighting background. So it's kind of like I want to get back into playing with color and doing things, uh, more models, more gel. Great. My name is Tim Hennis. Uh, I used gels once many years ago in a workshop and haven't done anything <laughs> with them since. Uh, maybe if I had gels, I might do something with them, but I don't have gels, so maybe I'll reconsider that. Some All right, great. Ones right there. And in the back behind the camera, we have my son, Ryan, who is our producer today. He's going to be pushing the record button and maybe adjusting the lights a little bit. Thank you for coming, Ryan. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's start with a 
with Jim's dumb definition. Now, a couple of workshops ago, you heard my dumb definition of what filters were, so I changed two words in the, in the dumb definition, and now my dumb definition of, of a gel is anything you put in front of your light source to alter the outgoing light. Um, anybody want to give a better definition, a more complete definition? Tim? Does that mean it doesn't have to be colored? Yeah, that's the yeah. Yeah. Of gels as being color. Yeah. They could be diffusers. That I doesn't mean, necessarily cast a, cast a color. So, but um, I think by definition, doesn't gel typically mean alters color? Yeah. Alters in, color. Yeah. in photography, yes. In, in stage, no. Because there are white or diffuser gels. But, mm -hmm. yeah. but right. I think most photographers most, right. think color. Mm -hmm. They want to change the background. Yeah, so there's, something a, else. there's a... Diffuser gel. So, okay. okay. Fair we'll, enough. We'll go with that. Okay. We'll, we'll allow it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, we call them gels because they were originally made from gelatin, uh, collagen from animals. And um, so while they work sort of well in early theater days um, because they don't have a melting point, but when they get hot, what happens, Gene? They get brittle, right? right? And so once you put them on in a light, you use them, and then if you ever have to take them off, they're just oh, crumbled. Man. They just turn to dust in your hand, so you, you, they're disposable. Um, in the 50s, we did a lot of uh, better living through chemistry, and we came up with a whole lot of really cool compounds, including things like polycarbonates and polyesters, and that's what modern gels are made of. We still call them gels, even though they're no longer made of gelatin. Sorry, Pete. Can't eat them. No jello. I yeah. got whipped cream. <laughs> you brought the whipped cream? Whipped cream. Okay. Is, is it gelatin uh, clear? No. Well, um, in its base form, yeah. it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In its base form, so it means that it'd be okay. So you add yeah. color to modify color to change the color. Right. And right. then you correct the color. color. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, <coughs> then you, that's all you need to know. And then yeah. you change it to black and white. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's camera. Great gel. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Any other thoughts on the stuff on that slide? Okay, now we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get really kind of geeky here. Uh, sorry, this is the uh, Mr. Wizard part of the show. I know everybody's anxious to get up and take fantastic photos of our beautiful model, but I'm gonna make you sit through the geeky part of the presentation first by talking a little bit about color temperature because I think a lot of people are very confused by it. Every time I go to Home Depot, uh, uh, and the, the source of the confusion is that your kindergarten teacher lied to you. When she talked about the color wheel, she talked about reds and yellows as being warm colors and blues and greens being cool colors. And certainly you can understand the confusion because that big ball of light in the sky that's red or orange or yellow, depending on the time of day, is warm, warms your face, warms the, the asphalt under your feet. And when you dip your toe in that beautiful lake or river or ocean, it's blue and it's green and it's cool and the grass is cool and the leaves are cool. And I can understand that, but it's completely wrong. It's false. Uh, ruined my childhood. <laughs> sorry. And, <laughs> and unfortunately, we use these terms, warm colors and cool colors, to this day, but we use it completely incorrectly. Warm white, cool white. Exactly, light bulbs. And we're going to use we're gonna see light bulbs as the perfect example. They're completely opposite of what really is going on from a science, physics, and thermodynamics perspective. How about that? OK, so I'm going to prove to you that your kindergarten teacher was wrong with a little visual thought exercise using this crowbar. Yes, we're going to prove to you that your kindergarten teacher was wrong using a crowbar. Right. Sorry, Ryan. You, can put, you don't have to look, get that look in your face. We're not actually going to use the crowbar. We're just going to look at it. So uh, you can see this crowbar. Um, and you see it because of all the reflected light in this room, right? You're seeing the light reflected off those lights, and you're getting specular highlights and some browns and things. Is this crowbar, this crowbar isn't really emitting any light, is it? That's also wrong. It is emitting light, but it's not emitting light in the visual spectrum. It's emitting infrared light. In fact, everything that's warm enough for us to touch is emitting infrared light. That's how night vision goggles work, right? So um, it is emitting a little bit of light, but it's in the infrared range. Now, if I were to take this and hand it over to a blacksmith to take into his smithy and put it in his furnace, and he began to heat it up, eventually it would begin to emit visible light, right? Mm -hmm. So what's that first glow with that first bit of light? What color is it? The warm color is red. 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 It is the lowest energy, the lowest frequency light that is emitted. It is the coolest of all 
visual light. If he leaves it in that furnace for a few more minutes, it starts to glow Green, right? orange and then yellow, yellow because those are higher frequencies, higher energy levels. You're getting higher, more hot uh, light. And eventually, what, what do we call it when something's super, super, white, super white hot. white hot? It's because it's so hot that it's now emitting blues, greens, indigos, violets, all those super high energy light levels. Those are the much hotter lights. 255 on the color scale. <laughs> <laughs> or Roy G. Biv, right? Yes. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That's how you remember the visual spectrum. Uh, and that's how it is. So the, the indigos and the violet lights are the hottest, the most it has the most energy, and that's why your kindergarten teacher is wrong. Whew. Oh, man. <laughs> and now you have ruined. ruin. So I know. A fashion instructor and you Mary Kay instructor, they all do it the same. What's that? Mary Kay and fashion. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, we the all way. use those terms the wrong way because we that's just what we were ingrained. Yeah, aesthetically, in, in, that's what we're programming. Yeah, to exactly. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the hardware store these days, is this my next slide? And you look at things like LED light bulbs, you get very conflicting information. Mm -hmm. You get something that says it is a cool white because that's the terms we've been using for light bulbs since the incandescent days up till a few years ago. But if you start looking at the color temperature numbers that are on the side of the box, they seem backwards, mm -hmm. but they're not actually. So the, the cooler, warm, the cooler. The cooler is warm. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> the reds, the oranges, the, the lights you would put in your living spaces that feel very comfortable and, you know, uh, we call them warm lights, are actually the coldest temperature lights. And the work lights, the blue lights, the white lights, the ones that you would put in your shop for you know, great uh, uh, visual acuity, those are actually the hottest lights. And that's why people get really confused when they read the box and when you start thinking about lighting, especially in, in mixed lighting situations. It's really important to understand those differences so that you can properly gauge and measure and make corrections in all the lights. So all the above lighting in the studio, that's all daylight balance. Those lights in the reception area, the lights in the, eight, the hair and makeup area, the lights in my office, they're all daylight balanced. Why? Because your flashes and your studio strobes are all daylight balanced. They're all somewhere in the 55, 5700 Kelvin range. Um, and I want, I like, I like, I like a single color of light. It's the easiest to work with, right? Um, and so why is all that important? Because gels, one of the first things you want to do with gels is to get that homogeneous lighting environment. Yes, sir. Question. You got a Kelvin scale there. Yes. Is that the same way that night kind of goes? Where 2000 is redder? That's any Kelvin scale. Yeah. yeah. What, when Nikon, you your, Canon, anything. When you put your camera in Kelvin yes. and you crank it up to 7500. Yep, that's the same. Red. Yeah. No. No, no. It's going to be more red. I don't, I it's don't a, think so. It's a correction is what you're doing. Yeah. You're not you're not telling the you're not telling the camera what to do. You're telling the camera what the light outside the camera right. is. Right. Okay. Does so that make sense? Add, it will add color based well, on because if you're at what'd you say 7500, mm -hmm. you're saying that the light outside is super blue, oh, and so the camera is going to color correct right. or shade. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So the camera is going to color Thank correct you. and add those reds and yellows in. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you know, Kelvin, you remember from high school uh, science class? You know, it's a it's a it is a scale to measure thermal energy. And so what you do is you apply some constants. I think it's Boorsman's constant. Don't quote me on that. It's one of those. It's been a long time. Apply a constant to that thermal energy, and you can get the equivalent, these numbers, in light temperature. So that's, how the, that's, how, that's why those numbers are so big. They're, they're multiplied by that constant, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, so why, do we, why is that important? Because a lot of times you need to be able to correct color. And uh, for my, and I'm gonna do a couple demos with Maddie. Maddie, you wanna come up and just stand right about there between those two states. <coughs> I'm going to try a few demos. Don't let her hair on fire. Um, not, <laughs> too late. Not, yeah. <laughs> That's right. You did that already? That's right. Reach over here and turn on this light. This CF, as you can see, is very warm or cool. 
cool. cool. It's very cool, cool right? Temperature-wise, it is very cool. <laughs> so, Ryan, why don't you drop those stage lights a little bit? Just dial it down until... There we go. A little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. Okay. So we get into this situation, maybe we're in a room that's all, all incandescent lit and as you can see, it's very dark. We would like to add some light to this subject because she's, well, depending on what, if, if we're Judith and this is the family portrait <laughs> in the church, you're Way too dark. usually <laughs> dealing with a lot of tungsten type light, right? E even if they converted to LEDs, they're, you're using oh, yeah. very, very low temperature lighting well, in there everything because... everything in there is going to reflect red. It's exactly. Red hues, right. red curves. Right. So when you come in and you add your flash, mm -hmm. let's add a flash. Let me bring this back so I don't completely blow you out. What's that? I'm not going to try to blind her. Let's see what happens if we add a flash in there. There we go. So now we've got very, very blue light over here and very, very warm light over there. Let's see the, let's see the picture again. So this is what we've created, this mixed lighting situation. And Judith, you probably run into this, right? Now you're trying to color correct this thing, and you know it's almost impossible to kind of fix this. You're, gonna, you're using radial you filters it. and gradation. You have to overpower it you, or you're in right. trouble in post-processing. Right, and, a lot of, and sometimes you can't, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's do this. Let's change the temperature of our speed light with a little gel. And all this is, I got CTO, which is one stop of uh, color tint orange and another sixth. So that's about that much light. So I'm going to add that in there. So you just clip it so it hangs there? That's what I'm doing today. That's I, fancy I, paper clip. Yeah. Just now, you know, paper. these gels, you can get the mag mods and all the really fancy things. And, you know, that you can that's spend. What that. What's that? That's where it's at. As yeah, far as so I've piece, got I've got little magnetic gels for this thing, but I don't have uh, I don't have a CTO like I, that I wanted for this demo, so I'm used to using the clip. So let's take a look at the difference if we gel that. Can't, again, can't guarantee it's going to be perfect, but now but we've got at least area. yeah, it's not perfect, but you know that you can correct that in post because you have a much more consistent color. Right, so we have now corrected this mixed lighting situation by making our light match the ambient light in the room. Pretty cool, right? Go back to the previous picture. The previous picture. Right, so see this was our ungelled flash, and there's our ambient light, what was left of it after we lit her up there. And then go back to the previous one. The, the one before this? Yep. Yeah. yeah well, you can see a lot of differences in the skin tones too, because you know, her freckles are real, really pronounced there. Oh yeah. And when you add the light to it, like half of them go away. When you put the gel on there, they kind of come back, but they're still kind of more. Even, you know. But if you're taking yeah, the yeah, remember, portrait, you're yeah, gonna, this is yeah, this is mostly color, side right? light. Okay. This is really the difference between side light and then a, a much yeah. more forward light. So yeah. well, that's kind of what what you're really looking at. So anyway. I mean, oh, fine. This is okay. This is the, what is the way it changes the, the, the overall appearance sure. of the subject there. Sure. Quick question. Is the, the white balance for the camera the same for all these pictures? For all these pictures we've seen so far? Right. Yes. So you're not doing you're a auto white balance? All I'm doing is changing the lights. Okay. Right? No. Um, what do you set your white balance sure. on when you start using the gel? It doesn't matter. Uh, whatever is correct. <laughs> let's let's okay let's take those two comments okay you guys are great straight men because it's going to take me right to my next demo so give me one well, we second that, so. all right i'm going to move this almost in line and i'm going to raise this up so anyway that was a demo of how you would use gels to correct a mixed lighting situation you didn't want now let's take a look at using gels to create a mixed light situation that we do want. Let me just get this out of your way. That's good. Okay. 
Let's have you step forward as far as you can. We're just gonna. This is gonna just be a head shot. Uh, maybe, not maybe not. <laughs> maybe not that close. Step. Okay, that's good. All right. So this is again not gonna be a perfect demo because I would like to have a little bit more separation between me, uh, and I want to. I would like to have ideally the ratio between the camera and the subject and the to the subject to the backdrop. I would like to have a lot more space back here for this demo, but. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, oh, look at this shot. Jim, what's, I'm sorry, what's the purpose of having more space behind the subject? So uh, inverse square law of light, right? Light falls off as the inverse square of the distance from the source. What I'm trying to achieve here is I want to light my subject with this light and not light my backdrop. No shadows. I don't care about shadows for this shot. Okay. So if you could move the backdrop back but also move back the light that lights the backdrop. You, you still have a light background, mm -hmm. but you've reduced the, the effect of the, the subject's light. Right, I'm basically just, I would like to have less spillage from okay. this light on the backdrop, ideally for what I'm trying to do next. And that is, if we take a look at this image in the screen here, you'll see you've, she's got this beautiful, creamy, uh, skin. She's got beautiful white eyes, and we've got a black backdrop, a white backdrop. And maybe we want a little, a punch more color. Maybe I decided I would like to have a blue backdrop, but I don't have a blue backdrop. What am I going to do? Well, we can actually make a fake blue backdrop, and I'm going to do it right now using an orange gel. I'm going to use those same orange gels. Remember, we had this camera color set for. Uh, that uh, uh, that uh, I had the white balance set for that am that amber light that uh, that low uh, low temperature light. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to correct for all that by going into my white balance setting. I'm going to dial this. I'll say all the way down to maybe. <laughs> I'm going to tell my camera, can you guys see that? I'm going to tell my camera I have extremely Warm. low temperature light, right? 2,500 Kelvin. It's make that so it's going to correct that. for all this gel. So what do you think that's going to do to the backdrop? Blue. It's, going to make the blue. it's going to make it blue. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, you want to drop that light again, Ryan? Because yeah, the camera is now adding blue to the image. Right. To correct. It is correcting for what I'm telling it is going to be a very low color temperature scene, a very orangey scene. So it's going to do that in camera. And in the process, anything that is neutral is going to get very hot. Let's see if I'm right. I may have to bump. Check the cable, cable connection. Huh. No, it was just, it was yeah. sleeping. There you go. Did you, oh, here, put it back. It's more blue than white. Like I said, if I have more distance, I can make that even bluer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we'll get to the point where we'll demonstrate what most people think of when they think of gelled photography, and that is using gels in a creative and constructive way to make very colorful uh, images that pop. I'm going to just spend a few moments on this slide to kind of give you some of my thoughts on, on, on when you're doing gels, be mindful of just a couple of things. And one of them has to do with your color story, your color palette. Be very thoughtful in your choice of gel colors the, in the storytelling of your photograph. If you're trying to go for something very um, uh, serious and somber, don't use fiery reds and yellows, right? Um, learn a little bit about complementary colors and split complementary colors and diactic colors and all these different color schemes and what they mean psychologically to us when we see them. I've got a whole other video on creative composition. We went into more detail on that. I'll stick a little uh, uh, link in the top of the video. You can go look at that so we won't rehash a lot of the same stuff. But I just want to say, hey, think about your colors. Just don't go throwing a couple of gels in there thinking, oh, that looks pretty because there's colors on the screen. What may just be interesting and colorful to you might have the wrong connotation to the observer, and that's really important. So uh, think about the psychology of all that stuff when you're, when you're choosing the colors for your, um, for your gelled set. You can use just 
a gel on your key light only to kind of give a color cast from one direction. You can put um, color just on a fill light to do just a little bit of a hint on the, on the shadowed side. You can do key and fill lights if you have uh, light set primarily brighter than the other or to some ratio that you're working on. Um, and in this case of this particular image, this, these two lights either side of the model were the same uh, brightness, so I'll call that a key and key type image. And then the last point I want to I want to make when you're creating these color shapes with gels is try to make as few geometric shapes as possible. Right here, I have a red geometric shape, and I have a blue geometric shape. Right? They're fairly contiguous. You can't get it perfect, or it won't look right. But if you've got the, if you've got it like really side lit, where you've got little tiny spots of color, it doesn't come off to me anyway aesthetically pleasing. It's too becomes too busy, and people spend too much time looking at these spots of color instead of the message you're trying to send. So I rarely do gel lights fully side lit. I usually do gel lights 45 degrees off camera, so I can get those spill of light that's very as simple as possible geometrically. They don't have to. I do plenty of shots where just the, the middle portion is, is, is like a regular light. So I might even have a on axis with camera light to get the center section. Um, I may even just only use gels for a rim light, you know, just to kind of rim of a shoulder or uh, in the case of Maddie's last shot, I gelled the hair light because even she's got this beautiful red hair, why not accentuate it? So I put a little gel on the hair light to just kind of give that a little bit extra pop, uh, less things I have to do in post. Anybody else who's used gels before got any other ideas on when and how to use them? Sometimes you uh, use it on the background. Oh yeah, right. You normally look the subject but still use a colored background, also like a complementary color. Right, yeah, so like these light panels I use, I've got a set of gels that just snap onto those things and I'll use that to just gel a, a background. In fact, I, sometimes I'll even gel the, back, the black <coughs> background because it's never 100% black, but I might maybe throw some pink on there to get a violet color, or like a dark you know, uh, maroon cast in some of the folds and, and fibers. So, yeah. yeah. I found like the white backgrounds when you gel them, it's, they become much more vibrant, almost too much. Mm -hmm. So I've tended to go with a darker background when I gel them. Mm -hmm. It makes it a little more subtle. Yeah, yeah. Middle to light grays tend to mm -hmm. take gels very well. Right. You can do a lot with them, and depending, and, you, and they, then you can just play with the brightness of the light to change their color cast a whole lot. So good point. Anybody else? I like using them to rim light to rim the subject. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I think a it separates them from the background, but b it just adds a little bit of visual interest to the subject. Yeah, especially if you can pick up a key color in their clothing or something like that to connect it all together, that really does make the, the subject pop. Very good, excellent. Any, any other thoughts? No? Okay, then I'm just gonna do one last demo with Maddie, and then we can stop. I can pull my gear out of here and get these chairs out of the way, and you guys can shoot her for the rest of the evening. Sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right, let me move this over here a little bit. I'm going to continue to use this light, but maybe not with those gels. Um, I don't know. What kind of color story should we use with, uh, with Madeline? Anybody have any suggestions? Green. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Green? You think green will clash with her hair? Well, compliment it. Maybe we won't green to clash with her hair. Oh, okay. Isn't that I Irish? Red hair and green? Red hair and green eyes are... Well, she's got blue eyes. We can fix that, though. She's we can change her eye color. She's got beautiful uh, eyes. Artist at work. She's very unique. Depends on the day, so... Yeah, depends on why I wear... And they're not freckles. That's where the soul is, yeah. the ginger. But if you want red eyes... Maybe red yellow. Eyes. <laughs> okay, so on this side, I don't have a green gel, but I have a blue gel and I have a yellow gel, so I can... Tie those together and voila! Look at that. Teacher told me that. Yeah. Not now, see so yeah, how my kindergarten teacher did teach me that, but that one seems to hold a little bit of <laughs> truth. And so, what do we want to complement our green? Purple. Purple. <laughs> wow. Wow. Purple. <laughs> mm. All right. You see. asked. Let's see I didn't I, ask. He yeah. asked. No. Somebody asked. I don't know if I. I don't know if I can make a purple work with this silly little light. No. Let's see what I can do. I don't know if I can do. I don't know if I can do purple. 
No, I can't do purple. Purple doesn't wow. want to be up there. But the Irish flag. Let me just hang on. <laughs> Gels don't care what how you use them as long as you just use them. Give her a beer now. What's that? The Guinness. Please. <laughs> You're Irish. Oh, you can kind of tell. There's no substitute for a Guinness. If you like eating your beer with a knife and a fork. <laughs> That's right. You should have calories. It's bread in a glass. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Ryan, you want to... Where'd he go? <laughs> Where'd my producer go? He left in the middle of the production. All right, that's it. You're fired. I'm cutting your pay in half. <laughs> Did you walk in front of the camera before? No, I don't. Oh, okay. No, these won't go down anymore. Huh? Uh, flip the little switches. You turn off the banks of them. There we go. Okay, that's good. Let's see what we got. What do you think we're gonna get out of this? A mess. Ooh. You think? A mess. Let me have you step back a little bit. Picture with some colors. Okay. Keep going. That looks good. I'm gonna turn this so, because like I said, I don't want a side lighter. I want to move this over here. So I've got a nice spill. And I'm going to close these barn doors so that they're not over. That one's not overlapping. That one I can't do much with. Maybe. Let's see. There. And let's see what we get out of it. No guarantees. It's a live demo. All right. So we're a little bit overpowered on this side. <laughs> but you're getting your green cast over here and your purple cast over here. So here's a good example of what I was talking about before. See, I've got like purple all by itself and purple down here all by itself. And it's not all that attractive. It looks actually kind of cool. You don't look ghoulish. The lighting is making you look that way. And if that was the look you were going for, if you're doing a Halloween shoot, this might be really, really cool look, right? Yeah, I only shoot on on auto, so I don't know about the, that dial over there. Um, all right, so that's more consistent. Let me get you to shoot, look right at camera. There you go. There you go. Yeah, and that's a little bit better, but I still think I would want to. If I had identical lights here, this would be a lot easier to deal with than that funny gel that's on there. But yeah, you I'm get... not too pleased with that purple gel. Yeah. I think it's really making it wonky. Yeah. Well, it's not a very interesting color story for me anyway. Um, th these two colors don't go together in a in a beauty portrait like this. Like I said, it it's would go real stuff together. You leave at the bottom of the Easter basket. <laughs> 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 have you ever been have you ever had that kind of compliment before I told you you'd like Pete right oh you're Pete, you're uh, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness he was our model until you showed up yeah alright well why am I here <laughs> Pete get up there yeah. <laughs> alright let me because now I'm done talking you've heard everything I want to say about this when I, I'm going to uh, pull my stuff out of here, I'm going to trade that light out for an identical light like that one so you guys have an easier time balancing those two, those lights, mm -hmm. let you guys get your camera gears, your stuff. <laughs>
two words for the eyes. talk about you before you we always say we don't have fun until you get there. Would you throw a red in there? Ooh, that's weird as hell. I just, <laughs> This was the weird I can shot. 